Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. Oh, didn't expect that. <laughs> Thank you. Why are we here? Why did you come here? You, leaders of the world, students of the world, suffering souls of the world, citizens of the world. And why did I stand outside an orthodox prelacy on 39th Street for 20 minutes every day for more than a year, several years ago? And why is the answer to these questions deceptively similar? As I told you the last time we were together, 2019 was a most difficult year for me. To marshal courage to import strength, to help me overcome, every day I would walk a block from our office to the prelacy, the head of that Christian church in America. Why? To stand outside, pray, reflect, and draw strength from the historical hardships endured. Somehow, I would always leave stronger than when I would arrive. That ritual of mine was validated a few weeks ago by my very good friend, Father Alex, who told me that the patriarch of the Eastern Orthodox Church, Bartholomew, seeks solace in the graveyards of the Greeks and other suffering souls when he needs to. This was drawing strength from those who came before us. We are here today at a base level to draw strength from those who are among us. And here we are. Throughout history, diseases and plagues have had catastrophic, visible impacts on humanity. But they also had many corrosive, invisible impacts that endured beyond the plagues themselves. The imposition of enforced isolation of COVID tribalized the world. But Concordia localizes the globe. By celebrating humanity in a democratic way, former president of Colombia, Ivan Duque, my dear friend, May I introduce you to Adam from the Ivory Coast, Lilian from Uganda, Umar from Guinea, rising young global leaders. By rejoicing in the resilience of the human spirit. Sean, yesterday, confined to a wheelchair. Today you can stand, tomorrow you will be walking. You will be. I believe it. I have faith in you. By reminding ourselves that we can and should strive always to be more than. My younger brother Nick and my friend Matt, who created Concordia 12 years ago, led a band of ex-underdogs, young people, mostly female, with the dream to become more than, to create more than, to be more than. Of course, all great things are seeded with dreams. It all starts there. Concordia is about what you can become, not what you were, not what you are but what you can be. And we are here to remind ourselves to keep marching forwards, to keep striving for ideals, and not succumb to the malevolent temptations of cynicism. To remind us of the dangers when the will of a few suppresses the desires of many. 
to remind us to dream. Concordia was founded and grew draped in democratic ideals. And here we are. And here we are also at a point in time where what may be most valuable to us can so easily be least appreciated by us. The right to self-determine. The ability to elect to be more than. And the possibility to become the best version of oneself. How shall we name it? Well, the Greeks beat us to it. Demokratia, otherwise known as democracy. A construct of governance that was bequeathed to us from those who came before us. Freedoms granted, not freedoms earned. But freedom is not free. Freedom requires protecting. Defending it is different from creating it. It can carry complacency, lack of appreciation, innocent or naive assumptions that we don't need to protect it. But the loss of freedoms could be akin to the loss of oxygen in that we don't fully recognize it until we are choking for air or choking for freedom. Just ask the Hungarians in 1956 or the Greeks in 1941 or many other tribes throughout history where freedoms or a form of democracy existed then suddenly did not. We are but one more continuum in the upward and constant march of civilization, part of the constant endeavor for ideals and progress. We are here today at Concordia, citizens of sensibility and responsibility, who have a duty to defend what we inherited from those who came before. For never should we assume that the default setting of human tribes is a democratic one. It is the historical exception to the reality of how we humans have been governed throughout time. And we need to do our duty to ensure it stays the rule that is worthy of that exception. For our actions or inactions, our awareness, lack of awareness, will drive the rivers of our collective fates. As the pendulum of progress swings, new technologies are born, old technologies die. The mechanism of how we intake information into our brains changes. How we process information changes. We tend to read more substantively when we read a book. We tend to converse in headlines when we read off our phones. Technology can, of course, educate us on the one hand, yet also reduce our ability to self-regulate on the other. Information can lead us to insights, but it can also incite us to discord as well. More is not necessarily better when it comes to information. When we fail to distill falsehoods from truths, when the frivolous is disguised as the substantive, when the illuminating is mortgaged to the inflammatory. The democratization of information in the last 30 years has also ushered in a tidal wave of rising expectations. And when expectations of how our lives should be rise at a substantially faster pace than how our lives actually are, well, we are all more vulnerable to the morning dew of dissatisfaction. 
and dissatisfaction from within leads to division from without. As but one example, we need to take great care that artificial intelligence does not lead us down a pathway paved with an artificial democracy, which could end up with us left with an authentic dictatorship. Caution is called for. Now, as we benefit from the next three days here at Concordia, a substantive, human, sincere exchange of information and ideas, a gathering of thousands of people from over a hundred countries of the world, let us inoculate ourselves from disinformation, misinformation, and isolation. In, clo in closing, ladies and gentlemen, students and leaders, student leaders, leader students, suffering souls and citizens of the world, I would like to pass on to you a gift that was given to me by a man of greatness whose like is so rare, Senator John McCain. Now, the last time I saw Senator McCain, I was seated on his left in late 2017 at a dinner. The very end of the dinner, I felt compelled to ask him, Senator, how, how did you persevere through five years of imprisonment and torture yet to emerge more than? The senator pierced the air between us with these fierce words. George, I overcame because of two reasons, George. One, they were never going to beat me, George. Never. Two, I used my brain to override the pain. I used my brain to override the pain. As the senator faced his challenges, we face ours. Cruelty, hatred, the dictatorial bullying of a few. Let us never let them beat us. Never. Jamais. Nunca. Yongbu. Pote. Never. Thank you very much.